Hey, what's up? It's Jake with Nimbus DevOps, and we are now in section 1.4 to talk about virtual environments. So I'm in this little repos folder. Now, from this point forward, we're just going to call folders directories. So if you're a beginning programmer, um, I come from the operations infrastructure side of the house. So um, we're going to use the correct terminology for all these things and you get to learn a little bit about along the way and we call them directories so inside this repos directory this is where i keep all of my code now i might want to make a um a local environment where all my code is running and maybe i want to put that in a new folder let's say i have a a client um, somebody hired me to write them some automation stuff. So I'm going to make a directory inside my repos directory called client A. Okay. And I'm going to make another one called client B. I got two clients that want to uh, have me hire me to write some automation scripts using Python. So they both use Python. They're both using Python 3, but let's say that I need to use um, some libraries which is like extra stuff that I need to use and I need to use version 3 for client A but let's say I need to use version 4 for client B well if I have version 3 installed on my computer and then I try to install version 4 it's gonna upgrade my version to version 4 because I'm on my computer and what's going to end up happening is client A's stuff's not going to be correct anymore. It, may, it might even break because it was on client three and now, or on uh, version three, and now it's on version four. So the way to get around this and to create separate package versions for different projects and different clients or different folders or different whatever is by creating something called a virtual environment. And it's just a logical, well, it's physical, but it's a, it's a it's a way to kind of separate versions of things into separate little isolated cubes or pods or containers or whatever and virtual environments so that you can maintain the integrity of those requirements um, even on the same the the same machine so uh, now that I have these directories let's go over uh, we're going to change directory to client a and I can see here I'm in home repos client a and uh, we're going to use this as like our root folder so this is like the beginning this is the top level folder and everything else inside of here for client a is going to be in this one folder so this is our root folder okay um, so inside of here uh, we're going to create a little virtual environment and I'm going to call it like uh, I don't know We'll just call it call it something uh, automated sure why not so in order to do this you have to run a little command uh, once you're inside this directory uh, with Python and you can make this environment so before we do this I want to show you if I type where Python it's showing me where it's running Python from so I can see it's running Python from the C drive in this directory is the executable and it's also running from here right so now I want you to see what happens when I use Python to call a module which is just a part of Python uh, like a specific method right and um, I'm going to use the virtual environment module and I'm going to name this automated one. We'll just call it. I'll just call it automated. Doesn't matter. Um, and I'm just going to hit enter, and you can see what happens. Ooh, it did something. Look, it made this include lib scripts. There's a config file, and then it's done, right? So it looks like it's done. And it didn't really give me any output. So what happens inside of here? So if I check Python again, 
oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> check, uh, where Python, I can see it's still running in the same place, right? So what I want to do is I'm going to go over to my activate. So it should be in scripts. Yeah, see there's an activate. And you have all and you have a Python executable inside of your scripts folder. So instead of running it on my computer, it's basically going to tell, hey Python, when you run, I want you to run from inside this directory. So we're going to change directories into my scripts. Where you at? What's in here? Automated. C automated C D scripts. Yeah, and then there's my activate right there. So I'm just going to type the word activate. And I'm doing that because this is actually um, a batch file, and there's a PowerShell file as well. It's a activate.batch file, and it's going to run this script that uh, will set this up for me. Activate. Did I mess this up? LS. Oh, activate.bat. Activate, activate, spelling is hard, dot, bat. And if you say command not found, uh, let's see here. Might need to get some permissions going on here. Uh, so I am in here. Let me see if activate is, I've got this text file. You must be with source bin activate from bash. You cannot run directly. Deactivate, unset. Here's all my virtual environment stuff. This probably doesn't mean anything to you, but that's fine. And all this is going to do is OK. And then I've got this PowerShell script. And it may be required to enable this script by setting the execution policy for the user. If we do, we need to do this, and I can go ahead and try that. Oops, but not twice. Uh, is this, no. Is this really one command? Dang, it's long. Here. Okay. And then, let me try it from here too. Uh, users, me, repos, client A, uh, automate, scripts, there's activate, activate, there we go. Now I can see it says automated right here. Now if I say where Python, it's running here, it's just running there. So I can see here, see this green text? This is annotated as I am running in a virtual environment right now. And the Windows PowerShell actually does this as a way of showing you where you are at all times. And you'll notice that if I do that here, if I type where Python, because I'm in a different terminal, where Python, uh, you can see here that I'm in this one. So now that I'm in scripts, if I type activate and then Windows has, I'm using a different um, bash terminal, so it's not going to work in here because uh, since I am on Windows, I need to use a Windows virtual environment. So I can actually just open PowerShells directly into here and basically do the same thing. So client A, automated scripts, there I am. And I can type Python, uh, where Python doesn't show anything. If I put activate, uh, term activate is not recognized. Oh, it's because I need a dot slash. And now you can see I'm in the automated virtual environment. So that is how you make a virtual environment. And that is how you set up a virtual environment. Linux is basically the same thing. The commands are a little bit different. Um, you have to do some additional execution steps, but that's essentially the same thing. Um, so you can source this stuff uh, just like I did with a profile in an earlier video. Uh, yeah, let's do the PowerShell extension. And 
uh, you can you can use that to switch back and forth between them. Okay, get out of there. Uh, no, not now. I don't care. I need, I'm updating later tonight. Okay, so um, once we're set up and we've checked uh, which Python we're running, we checked where we're running, and you can even do that in here too. If I'm in, uh, let me go back to this one. Let's get rid of that. So if I'm in, if I'm in here, I can see uh, that I'm in the automated virtual environment. I can also type uh, which Python. Oh, this might be a a Linux thing. Python. Python three. No, I just want which Python three. Which Python three? It's getting late, y'all. I need to go to bed. Let me just double check. All right, I'm still on three point ten. All right. So we're on the same versions. So now I'm in this virtual environment. If I install something, um, it won't install it on my machine globally. It will just install it in this virtual environment, like a little isolated container uh, just for client A. So you can do this at client B. Uh, you could make more. You could do whatever you want. And you'll also notice that there's a deactivate script. So if I want to get out of this, I can type deactivate maybe, and we can get out of it. So let me pull up my, I'm surprised I can't just write deactivate. There we go. And the green goes away, right? So now I'm not in that. If I type where Python, um, there's nothing there. If I type activate, <laughs> dot slash activate. I'm in the automated virtual environment. If I type deactivate uh, without the batch, just deactivate. Then now I'm out of it. So that's how you get in and out. You can just activate and deactivate. Uh, and I like this because it tells you where you are all the time, so you know which one you're working in. Um, wow, I need to update my stuff. I'll do that tonight. Um, so essentially, that's that's how you're doing this. Whenever you're building something, you should always use virtual environments because you might be troubleshooting something and working on some project, and you end up installing all these modules, and you end up installing all these libraries, and what you end up with is your computer gets cluttered with a ton of different stuff, and you don't need all of it. You just need the bare minimum. So anytime I do a project, I just create a virtual environment for it, and then once you're in that virtual environment, you can use that environment to kind of isolate everything from each other and have a little bit more of a clean, uh, clean setup. So I'm going to go ahead and remove client client A and B. Uh, let's do an RMRF. Oh, I'm in PowerShell. Let's go to Bash. Uh, T1, 2, 3. Yep, okay. So let's do an RMRF for client star. And then all of my directories are gone. So that's uh, it's just a quick overview on virtual environments. If you have questions about virtual environments, let me know. But essentially, just always use a virtual environment whenever you're starting something. Um, it's a good habit to get into. It's really the best practice for working with Python, as you should always be working with virtual environments and isolate things from your main computer as much as possible and isolate your projects from other projects. So that is the value of it. That is why you would do it. And I hope that helps. Um, I've got some more stuff that we're going to be doing in the future. So we'll be using virtual environments for everything. And as we go through these things, if they have different requirements, you'll see me switch from virtual environment to virtual environment. And now you know what it is that I'll be doing and why I'm doing it. So uh, good luck. Have fun. Create a, a little virtual environment for yourself and try activating, deactivating it. And then uh, go ahead and remove it. And you'll be right back where you started and ready to move on to the next part.